Kalonzo Musioka and the party leader of Waipa Democratic Movement, uh, Honorable Wadai, the minority leader in parliament, all members of parliament uh, present, and all the political party leaders present, and the citizen in this hall this afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to start by saying this is an important forum where the citizens are allowed also to ask questions to the leaders and also interact with the legal process and procedures as it is required. Uh, I'm here to talk about political parties and their role in registration in the legislative process. And I want to note that first of all, the purpose of any law anywhere in any country is first of all to articulate the rights of the citizens. Uh, two, uh, NRO is supposed also to address the regulatory framework that can be there so that uh, human beings must be regulated as far as behavior is concerned. Without laws, sometimes you miss the point that you are not able to really identify with the people uh, and especially when it comes to behavior. And one of the, that regulatory process is the political behavior of Kenyans. And that's why probably the Political Parties Act was created uh, so that they bring the regulatory framework of our political parties and therefore by extension the political behavior. Law is not static. I totally agree that uh, law must adjust with the society. Uh, when the, the society changes and the circumstance changes, so should be the law. So that's why when we are discussing about the Nadical bills and uh, the legislation framework, we are cognizant that our circumstances keep changing. And uh, secondly, from an electoral practitioner point of view, every after elections, we do what we call post-election evaluation. The reason for post-election evaluation as a country is first of all to identify the gaps and two, to look at the areas that we never did very well so that we bring on board legislation framework that will address the issues that were a problem in that electoral cycle. So I'm speaking from uh, that perspective that law is not static, that law keep moving uh, depending on the society and the circumstances that are there. This very location of Mugwano House is, uh, has a rich history uh, in many things, including uh, engaging and coming up with the solution that made the country move forward. But, uh, but so that I'm not really verbose, I want to really talk about the Political Parties Act uh, and probably touch just little on uh, any other law that affect elections because I practice elections and uh, governance and especially governance of political parties. In 2003, 2001 is when we had the first political parties act bill which was sponsored, it was that particular time is funding, was on funding of political parties which was sponsored by Ford Kenya then, uh, Muscari Kobo, and it went on and on until 2007, that is when we had the first political parties act. 2007, which now delinked the office of uh, the the legislation of this law has of course gone through very many other several changes. One of the other proper review was done in 2011, which now created an independent uh, institution through the Political Parties Act. We are now facing another review, which uh, also probably uh, circumstances have changed and that's why we are saying then we need to review the Political Parties Act. But I have a few questions we ask ourselves. First of all, we must understand what exactly are we fixing. 
that is should be the number one question when we are reviewing the political parties act if we are fixing uh independent and strengthening the institution then we should look at the tenants of an independent institution what does it uh entail and uh, i have a few three or two issues i would want to bring especially to the people who participated in NADOC uh, process that probably when we are looking at the reform we need to look at and i thank uh, opio wadai the uh, leader of minority for saying that we shall work closely together because we should create a law that is meant for posterity and helping uh, the governance of political parties and also the institution that uh, regulate those political parties the first thing when we appeared in bombers as and many other people had wanted the office of registrar whether in its current form or whether in a commission to be put in the constitution why because that is one of the tenants of constitutional independence this office is now established under the meaning of article 260 of the constitution which create and allows creation of such independent offices that uh, the, the, uh, that operationalizes the constitution when you now bring a commission and then we now would not fall under the article 260 and then it doesn't fall under chapter 15 then there the issue of constitutional independence bring a problem probably you may want to look at that when uh, we are progressing so that we make sure that this particular uh, office is anchored in law done uh, that have been done on the on the constitutional amendment bill in regards to article 91 and article article 92 um uh, the background at which the political parties are formed but uh, i don't know what can be the problem if we just also import the, con the 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 office itself into the into the constitution because political parties are well 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 established in the constitution so it will be prudent if we bring the office that regulate into the in the constitution that will create constitutional uh constitutional independence number two i read that the published bill the one that was published at the senate uh indicate two things does not connect with the current office of the register of political parties in any way why because it doesn't provide any transitional clauses at all at all so meaning scrapping an institution and create another one from the scratch or do we want to transform an institution from one level to another are we reforming an institution uh, so that if that is the case then we need to provide squarely a lot of transitional clauses because as a start now uh it's we start a risk of saying even the political parties then as they establish do not exist the records and assets do not exist are bring to attention that there's a lot of work that has been done to institutionalize that office and uh, a lot of money that has been used so that transitional clauses should be provided to be able to connect the office together with the as a practitioner in the area i want to tell you the infrastructure as the bill presents face a challenge may bring a challenge one because uh, but the people who are regulating are coming directly from political parties so my wish was maybe this should be a process of where we, we recruit people who are completely in the regulatory work uh, you are one of the concern as a regulator is that we have removed even the regulatory function we are creating a regulatory authority with zero regulatory function actually at the section that three the bill has removed uh, the requirement of regulation from the regulator then what shall be the regulatory and it and has the name regulatory be doing if it doesn't have the regulatory um, ability 
Porridge chopatis are very important in terms of uh, ensuring good governance and democracy in a country. Therefore, when we are establishing a framework that actually regulates them, it should therefore not uh, be short of uh, very clear structures on how then the regulation will happen. The bill also does not even provide what are the disqualification and qualification of people who shall be members of that, that commission. And uh, it also does not give clearly what will happen to the current office holders and also the staff of the, the OLPP. Uh, so in a nutshell, we have done a very comprehensive uh, response to the call for, call for memorandum to the Senate. But in a nutshell, that is some of the issues that we really need to look when we are looking at the NADOC process. Um, allow me also to talk about one or two issues on, uh, j just in one minute. I know you want to come, but it just in one minute. <laughs> uh, one, I, I'm also, as a practitioner in election, there's also the election offenses amendment bill. Uh, one of the provisions there talk about uh, that it will be an offense for a, for, for a polling station official not to transmit results within two hours. But then it doesn't qualify the, some of the circumstances that can lead to delay. Some of them it's network. And uh, some people have to move from one polling station uh, all the way probably near to even near the turning center. So I want it aligned with the realities on the ground as far as election management is concerned so that you don't criminalize uh, for, a, for a, a PO who is actually one of our children. It may be your son. Because these POs are young people. And if you criminalize that you don't post the election within two hours, then it's criminal. It can be a problem to those young people. So if we, we really outrain the circumstances under which then that delay can happen, it can also be very good. Finally, I have seen in one, I think it's still with the election amendment bill, that uh, an an office, uh, that's, the, the dispute resolution between the commission and the returning officers is being transported from the commission to the judiciary. I've been IBC for 10 years or more. That one will actually interfere with the electoral timelines. When you, you, the dispute between a returning officer and a candidate, to me, as I, and I, it's my considered opinion, and, uh, but I'm a practitioner and I have done that in the area, uh, should be left to the commission. Let the commission deal with uh, their own returning officers so that the timelines are not interfered with. When it goes to court, it can go, it can go. At what point shall we print the ballot papers? I, I rest my case.